In this doubles lesson, I'm going to cover three easy rules you can follow for crossing or poaching on the court. So I see a lot of club level players who, uh, when they play, they're really not sure when to cross. They're a little bit scared to get beat. And what I mean by that is when you see this kind of cross court rally back and forth, that's so common uh, at the club level. Uh, and these net players will just get stuck um, somewhere. I'm looking at the server's partner here. So they'll get stuck moving kind of in this circle area around here. And they're afraid to cross or they're not sure when to cross or don't know how. Um, so I'm going to cover three rules here that you can uh, follow that will make it much simpler for you to decide should I be crossing here or should I not. So let's watch this point and then we're going to go back through all three things here that Ellen Perez uses to poach on Coco Golf's backhand. So the first rule is depth. So what I mean by that is the depth of your partner's shot. So you can see this ball lands relatively deep in the court. So it's landing right uh, about here. Um, and depth is really important because it allows you to uh, have time to poach, and it's also a lot more difficult for the opponent to redirect a ball that lands deep in the court. So what I want you to think about is just looking at where the ball's landing. If it lands in this kind of back half of no man's land, then that's probably a pretty good ball to poach on. If it lands somewhere around the service line area, then you probably don't want to poach on that ball because you're not going to have time to react to the volley because it has such a shorter path uh, for the ball to go. So you have to react much quicker versus a ball that's struck back here. You have plenty of time to react to that volley. Uh, the other thing about depth is because Coco is hitting this ball from a little bit deeper in the court, if she were to go down the line, Ellen's partner, Nicole, has more time to get over here versus if it was a shorter ball, that Coco was hitting, say, from right here, and she took that down the line, there's no time for your partner to recover and to get over here. So um, depth is the first rule. It's really important. Uh, it's very difficult for the opponent to redirect a deep ball. So this ball um, that lands pretty deep in the court, not super deep, uh, is going to be tough for Coco to redirect down the line, um, and even tougher, really, at the club level. Pros can do it a little bit easier, but club level players really have trouble redirecting a ball with depth. So that's the first thing you want to look at is, is the depth here. Um, you can see Ellen reads that depth and poaches across the middle for that volley. So the next thing we want to think about is the position. So we want to look at A, the position of our partner, and then B, the position of the opponent. So in this case, you can see Coco hits the return. And Ellen kind of looks back right here. She's looking back at Nicole to see where she is on the court. And she can see that Nicole is inside the baseline. Her back foot's kind of on the baseline there, uh, which is a good position. means she's going to be able to hit a really um, solid shot that takes time away from the opponent. And then she's also looking at the position of the opponent. So in this case, Coco is probably three feet behind the baseline which means she uh, is going to have, it means the ball is going to travel a lot further. So this kind of is correlated with the depth that we talked about first, but anytime you find a opponent hitting from really deep in the court, uh, that's going to allow a lot more time for you to get to that ball um, for the volley and for your partner to cover the down the line shot. So um, look at the position of not only your partner, are they hitting a ball, well balanced from inside the court uh, as well as the position of the opponent. Are they kind of off balance? Are they way behind the baseline? Um, things like that to look for. So uh, position is the second one. The third rule, and this is a really important one as well, is the stroke. So you want to know what stroke is the opponent hitting? And in this case, Coco is hitting a backhand, which for her is actually her stronger shot, but for most club level players, it's not going to be. Uh, but also what stroke is your partner hitting? So I mentioned earlier that Ellen kind of looks back here at Nicole. So she's looking for her position, 
but she's also looking to see if she's going to be able to hit a runaround forehand here or a backhand. So because Ellen sees her hitting a runaround forehand, and she knows that Nicole prefers her forehand or backhand, she she's pretty. Uh, it, she knows that it's pretty likely that this is going to be a really good shot. So if you see your partner setting up for a forehand inside the court, you know, okay, I need to be ready for this. Let's look for it. This might be a good ball to cross on. So she saw that it's a inside out forehand inside the court. So now she's looking at the depth of the ball. She's looking at Coco's position and she kind of, you see, she kind of fakes here. So she split steps back towards the doubles alley to draw Coco cross court. So at this point, Coco's like, okay, cross court's open. And then she moves and times this really well. Um, the other thing you wanna look at is the opponent's stroke. So in this case, Coco has a backhand. For most ad court players, they're gonna prefer their backhand cross court, uh, not down the line. So this is a really good ball to poach on, especially at the club level. Um, and in general, the backhand is gonna have less pace. So it allows you, again, more time to react to the volley when you poach, and also more time for your partner to run over here and cover uh, if they do go with a down the line backhand. So stroke is that third thing. So if you can get all three of those things right, get a good deep ball, get the uh, opponent positioned well behind the baseline, and have them hitting their weaker shot, which is typically a backhand, that is a great time to poach. And when you do poach, uh, be sure to do what Ellen does here, and you wanna move a little bit diagonally. So you can see she starts um, about halfway between the uh, net and the service line, and she kinda of takes a diagonal uh, path here towards that middle net strap area kind of running forward with a little forward momentum, which makes it a lot easier. So those are your three rules for poaching. Hopefully this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will talk to you in the next lesson. If you wanna become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Doubles Strategy Newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're gonna get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will, I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe, and over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players, all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.